ministers, all men, of course, spoke out against her ideas. Women belong at home. Newspaper reporters, all men, of course, wrote what they thought about Elizabeth's declaration. Lawmakers, all men, of course, laughed. <laughs> Women certainly do not belong in the voting booth. Elizabeth wasn't surprised that her ideas shocked so many people. Neither was Lucretia. They knew it was going to be a long, hard fight before women won equality, but Elizabeth had no doubt they would succeed. With so many newspapers all over the country reporting on the Seneca Falls Convention, word spread about Elizabeth's ideas. Lots of women agreed with her. Meetings popped up in towns and cities in the North and Midwest. A thousand women came to the first National Women's Rights Convention in Worcestershire, Massachusetts in 1850. Sojourner Truth, who had escaped from slavery, went to a meeting in Ohio. She caused quite a stir when she reminded white women that black women were treated even worse than they were. That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches and to have the best place everywhere. Nobody ever helps me into carriages or over mud puddles or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? In the spring of 1851, a 31-year-old school teacher named Susan B. Anthony visited Elizabeth. The two women became fast friends. They traveled everywhere and made lots of speeches together. But after a while, it became too hard for Elizabeth to travel. She had to stay home and bake and cook and wash and sew and care for her children and her husband. Susan B., who was single, went anywhere and everywhere. Other women hit the lecture trail, too. Soon women started doing things that men and even some women called unladylike things. Amelia Bloomer promoted new comfortable clothing for women. Women could hardly breathe or move before in their tight laced long dresses with heavy petticoats underneath. Some petticoats weighed as much as 14 pounds. And as if Amelia's clothing wasn't unladylike enough, Mary Lyon opened a female seminary, known today as Mount Holyoke College. The women studied science and mathematics, geography, rhetoric, philosophy, astronomy, ancient and modern history, subjects that men studied in their colleges. Two sisters, Elizabeth and Emily Blackwell, became doctors. When no hospital would hire them, they set up their own clinic for women and children and a medical school for women. Antoinette Brown became minister and preached in a church. And then, then there was Lucy Stone. At her marriage ceremony to Henry Blackwell, and um, one of Emily's and Elizabeth's brothers, she refused to say she would obey her husband. Henry agreed, and Lucy kept her name after they were married. In snow, in rain, in hail, the suffragists traveled everywhere. Suffragist is a name for a woman who fought for the vote. They gave speeches even during blizzards. More times than not, they were mocked and booed by men and by women too. But their hard work and dedication helped. In Massachusetts and New York, women finally gained the right to own property and keep whatever money they earned. But no matter how many people the suffragists talked to, and no how, ma matter how many petitions they got signed, and no matter how hard they worked to win the right to vote, the lawmakers still refused to change the laws.